What's going on YouTube? So in this video we're talking Raspberry Pi OctoPrint. So this is going to be connected to a Creality CR10 V2 FDM style printer. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually hook up that Raspberry Pi with OctoPrint on it to the 3D printer and we're going to have a webcam set up with it so I can use my home network and watch my prints. I can upload G-code straight to my 3D printer and I can also see my thermal profiles. If you're interested in doing this project, see you after the jump. So again, in this video, we're going to be using a Creality CR10 V2 along with a Raspberry Pi Zero and we're going to be installing OctoPrint. And this is an open source software application um, designed to run with Raspberry Pi and provide a web interface for 3D printing. Um, it's been around since 2012, um, but it's a lot easier to install in my opinion now that it's integrated with the official Raspberry Pi manager and imager. Um, so you can just download that for Windows, Mac, or Linux. And once that's installed, um, you're gonna want your Raspberry Pi and an SD card that's at least eight gigs in size. And so here's the required parts on the screen. And uh, I'll link this in the description below as well. Um, and once you open up the Raspberry Pi manager, just select your storage device that you're gonna use. And then you're gonna want to find specific purpose OS and then find 3D printing, and then find OctoPi to install it. So if you click on choose OS here, we're gonna scroll down to other specific purpose OS, click on 3D printing, and you'll see OctoPi at the top. It's that easy. Once that's selected, just hit the little gear icon to bring up your options. And you're gonna wanna do some settings for your OctoPi OctoPrint. And first of all, I'm gonna change my host name I'm just going to call it uh, OctoPi. Um, it, it's arbitrary to what you call it. Um, it just helps you access it um, once the server is up and going. And then also use a username and password. Um, for, for me, I'm just going to use OctoPi again. And then configure your setup for your home Wi-Fi network um, because OctoPi is going to want to connect to your Wi-Fi so it can run that server. Once you have all the information in, just choose your uh, wireless uh, country. And for me, it's US. And I also set the time zone for myself as well. And I'm just going to play a sound when finished. And then I'm going to say write to the SD card. And it's just telling me that it's going to overwrite everything on there. And it should take about 15 to 20 minutes, um, uh, but possibly less, uh, to pull the OctoPi OctoPrint onto that SD card. If you're using Windows, it's going to say something about formatting stuff. Just say cancel and just close that stuff out. And um, and then it's going to say stuff is complete. Just say continue. You can remove it. And then you're going to want to put that SD card into your Raspberry Pi. So it's as simple as putting your SD card in and turning the Raspberry Pi on. Um, you can plug it into an HDMI if you want to see it boot up. Um, you don't necessarily have to, um, but it took about 15 to 20 minutes. It did take a while on initial startup. Um, to get the server up and running. And if you have access to seeing what IP addresses are on your home network, you can connect to its IP address directly, um, but you can also link to it uh, per the link I'm gonna put on the screen right now. You'll get an initial setup wizard um, and just click next. And if you do have a backup to restore it from a, from a different version, do that. I did not. Um, and you need to set up a username and password. Uh, so every time you log into your OctoPrint, uh, you can log in with your username and password. And it's required now. Um, for me, uh, for this example, I'm just gonna use OctoPi OctoPi um, just to get us going here. The next section is gonna be about a connectivity check. Um, and for me, I'm just doing 60 minutes, but 15 is the default. And um, I don't necessarily recommend changing it, but I did for this example. Um, and then you just have to say disable or enable connectivity check before moving on. While I was doing this, I noticed that uh, this was incredibly slower than doing this on a uh, Raspberry Pi 2 through 4. Um, and then I noticed in the top right that OctoPrint uh, does not and has never supported the Pi Zero W, which is what I'm using. 
Um, so it's saying it's, there's gonna be bad performance, failed prints, uh, and I'm at risk here. Um, but you know, I just have this thing sitting around, um, and this seems like a good project to use it for. Um, so I'm gonna continue on. Um, so just be aware that the Raspberry Pi Zero W is not the best Raspberry Pi for this. And uh, I'll put a link in the description below as well um, to that forum post that talks more about that. I disabled anonymous usage tracking and then for plugin blacklist, I enabled that uh, just so I don't accidentally install any plugins that will cause me issues. And then when setting up your default printer profile, um, just give a name to your profile. For me, I'm using a Creality CR10 V2, so that's what I'm going to call it. And then I will link in the description below um, OctoPi, OctoPrint, you know, the, the forums have a bunch of typical setups for 3D printers. Uh, and for me, I'm just going to do initial setup here. Um, all it needs to know is basically the volume of your printer and, and how it works. Um, and for me, it's an FDM uh, 300, 300, 400 and um, form factors rectangular. So once you're done setting up all the settings here, you're gonna get a finish screen. It's just gonna give you that general warning that you shouldn't leave a 3D printer unattended. Um, obviously using Octoprint will help you watch it on your home network with a uh, webcam, uh, but never you know walk away from a print and just let it go. Uh, things like thermal run runaway are a big issue, uh, starting fires, etc. Um, and then the next thing I noticed was that my firmware for my Creality CR10 V2 was not the best firmware. So this was the stock firmware it came with and Octoprint was suggesting per the forum uh, post that I upgrade my firmware. Um, I think you can flash it with something called Marlin or something. Um, but there was also a plugin workaround uh, for the code that it ran uh, to 3D print. So what I did is I actually went to the settings and installed that plugin. And all you have to do is just hit the wrench in the top of the screen and then find the plugin manager section, click on that. And there was a link in the forum post and I will put that forum post in the description below where you can just stick the URL in and download that plugin and install it. Uh, this plugin enables Octoprint to talk to my Creality CR10 V2 um, and you know, uh, speak the same language, so to speak. After a quick reset um, and setup of my webcam, I was good to print. So in Octoprint, you can see everything on your SD card in your printer. And you can actually upload G-code to your SD card from your PC or phone, which makes it really nice. I don't have to take the SD card in and out of my 3D printer now. I can just direct print from my Wi-Fi on my home network. And once you start a print, if you hit the temperature tab on top, you'll see where the print starts. You'll see your bed temp and hot end temp as you're printing. And then what's really nice with this is you can see your print from your webcam. Um, so you can access your Raspberry Pi OctoPrint software from your phone, um, from your PC, and you can actually monitor your print as it's going. And I thought this was really cool um, and a really nice feature and upgrade for my Creality CR10 V2. And even though I'm using the unsupported Raspberry Pi Zero W, everything seemed to work great with my test print. Um, so I'm really curious as I print more stuff, um, what's going to go wrong here. So I'm curious where that support ends because it seemed to work really well for me. And here's the setup. It's basically a webcam Raspberry Pi Zero with the USB out. And I'm just connecting to a USB hub here where I actually have a Microsoft Xbox 360 cam. And then I have a USB connecting straight to my CR10 V2. Um, a PSA, um, when you turn your printer off, sometimes the Raspberry Pi does charge backwards, so to speak, charges your um, uh, 3D printer. Um, and there have been issues with this. Um, and there is a forum post I will link um, in the description below, um, but I have not had any, any issues with this uh, whatsoever. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. And if you have any comments or uh, little tricks that you did or good plugins to install, please comment them in the comments below. Thanks. In the world of 3D printing, there's a tool that's truly stunning, a software that's worth highlighting, OctoPrint. Oh, how exciting. With a web interface that's clean, it simplifies the printing scene. From